Now, Manchester United haven't conceded a single goal in the Premier League in four matches with four clean sheets back to back for Andre Onana. Newcastle, on the other hand, will surely look to test that resilience and test the goalkeeper in question. And there are certainly big, big question marks about the Manchester United goalkeeper, especially after what happened in week taking the lead against Galatasaray and three goals that they conceded that Onana really should have done a lot better, Gary. And I understand the narrative around Andre Onana, his purpose coming into Manchester United, why David De Gea was let go. And there's a lot of negative reaction on Andre Onana. However, in the Premier League, his stats are actually up there and quite comparable. If you compare him to Nick Pope, for example, he fares better than Nick Pope, Gary. Well, Premier League stats are one thing, aren't they? Yeah. United are playing in the Champions League also this season. Um, what are the stats like in the Champions League for him? Um, I, I think he will come through a difficult period. Um, at times he doesn't inspire me. Even, even simple little things with his handling at times, he looks a little bit shaky to me. Um, and yes, he's made some really big mistakes in games as well, um, which have cost Manchester United quite dearly. Um, Ten Hag is back in his goalkeeper, and so he should. Um, but th there's an awful lot of evidence that, that says it's hard to back Anana mm. at the moment. There really is. It's such a crucial position to your goalkeeper, yeah. eh? And I thought he turned a corner a little bit. I thought the save in the Champions League against, was it Gothenburg? When all of a sudden he looked, or he looked confident in himself. Mm. He's got, that last-minute penalty save, yeah, last that one, yeah. penalty save. He, he hasn't gone off to the best of starts and he hasn't looked the most confident for somebody who has been really highly yeah. thought of over the last few years. As a goalkeeper, he had judged on one thing. Your stats can be great. However, there's no doubt he'd be disappointed but, of what happened in the midweek yeah. in Galatasaray because he could be at fault for certainly two of the goals, which is the big stat. Goalkeepers, the Big ones, good ones, don't make many mistakes. Well, there seems to be a bit of a, a Jekyll and Hyde situation with Onana. Like you said, he can make those big saves and it does happen. But the errors that he makes sometimes are quite... How do, how do I put it? A, a bit schoolboy errors at times. Well, and you, you can't really expect which Andre Onana you're going to get on that day. Well, certainly the, the ones in midweek, I think, were, were pretty... Were, were poor by mm. any goalkeeping standards. So the pressure's on him today. This is all about dealing with Manchester United, and if you're a goalkeeper, the one thing you have to deal with is the expectation and, um, and, uh, and be able to handle it. Mm. Let's hope he comes through, because they've paid a lot of money for him, and uh, obviously Ten Hag knows him, so he's confident that he's going to come through, but when you see the goals that we're just witnessing here now, he's gambled to go the other way, and that's an awful goal to give away, and, um, uh, and this one is... I think Martial doesn't help him by pulling himself, his head out the road, but again you'd have to be disappointed if that was your goalkeeper well look at the goalkeepers manchester united have had down the years and he's the poorest of the lot so far and i know it's early and if you're comparing the two it's interesting pope gets a lot of criticism i know which one i'd be i'd rather be playing in front of pope um for me is a very very good goalkeeper but he's not as good on the ball as mm. these goalkeeper but the goalkeepers as I said before for me i want seven out of ten every week. I don't want my goalkeeper nine one week and three the next week. Pope is consistent. The players who are playing in front of him know what they're going to get. And let me tell you, if Newcastle have recovered well enough today, they're going to put Anana under an awful lot of pressure from set pieces. They're going to put people under the crossbar. They're going to put him under pressure. And I think, I, I really believe Newcastle will beat him tonight if they, if they recover. They're, they're poor at the back. What uh, Ten Hag has done moving Luke Shaw in there, I, it's beyond How? me, but Anano's not going to come and relieve the pressure off his back four. We've seen that. How does he go from being one of the best goalkeepers last season, has been the best goalkeepers for a few seasons now, to now being, based on the eye test, one of the poorer goalkeepers, Gary? Well, I think it depends very much. Upon... Oh, are we too harsh? Because he is moving to the Premier League. It is a new yeah. league and it's, it, it's the toughest you know, one. It depends which, you know, what team is in front of you doesn't it? Um, and Manchester United aren't a convincing side at this moment in time. Um, you know, there's a lot of 
unrest within the club, there's a lot of uncertainty within the club. The back four, look at it tonight, it's, it's being changed all the time. Yeah, I think they have seven different centre-back partnerships united this yeah. season. But I think, Steve I think that's makes a big call. Yeah. Steve makes a big point. This is the difference, though. Mm. You can play wherever you want to play with. You, you, you ask Steve about going and playing at Manchester United as a player. Well, there's a big demand on you, Carlton, as you know, because everywhere you go around the world, you know, mm. Manchester United is Manchester United. And you have to adapt to the way and the demand on you. And of course, if you make a mistake, the spotlight, like what we're talking about today, mm. is on you. All of a sudden, the spotlight's on the, on the kid now. Let's hope he recovers, because I do believe there's a good goalkeeper in there. He hasn't had the best of starts, but he's been proven he needs time, and he doesn't need any nights like he had the other night. I honestly believe, though, a back four in front of him, which is unsettled mm. all year, and Ten Hag's had to deal with that, with the injuries to Luke Shaw and, um, and Martinez in particular, they haven't had anything settled, and I think that has give them, not given them the platform. I think Newcastle, uh, Manchester have conceded three times, three, three goals eight times this season, mm. which is unheard of. But so they need they a settled team. I understand what you're saying, Steve, then, so why change the back four tonight then? They've well, just, they, they played well against Galatasaray in midweek, and he's going to change the back four again. Well, there's obviously a reasoning for it. I don't think he's ever going to come on camera to say that, but. It, it seems a strange decision. Well, I'll tell you what it is, he's protecting Luke Shaw. <laughs> well, maybe it is, but I, I think if I, I, was, it, if I was Rafa Varane or I was uh, Lindelof, I wouldn't be very happy, no. would you? No, yeah. absolutely not. <laughs>